Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm not feeling particularly well today, so I hope you'll all forgive me for being a little bit lazy with this video. I've got no green screen, so unfortunately this part of the video is a little bit more opaque, I guess, than usual. But uh, hopefully that will be okay. So, during uh, my Mundev stream, which if you don't know, I'm doing this cool live stream thing on Mondays. Uh, go check it out, I'll put a link to the video, uh, where I'm making a game over the course of a few weeks. Uh, during that stream, um, I implemented this cool camera mechanic, this thing, like where you, you walk between rooms, it kind of does like a Mega Man-esque sort of transition, except kind of in real time, like kind of keeps going, um, and create a little smooth camera thing, mostly based on the code from like my dynamic camera tutorial, just kind of adjusted a little to work in a specific way, and a few people suggested in the stream that I do like a quick tutorial video on it where basically I explain how I did that. Uh, so I figured, why not? I'll do that. So this is that video. Alright, so how it works, if you're at all familiar with like my dynamic camera tutorial, is that I have an object here that I've plunked up in this corner of the room called obj underscore camera. Right? And basically this object is an invisible object that moves around in the step event and uh, will set the camera's position to be like centered on it, right? Um, or in this case, actually, it's not centered on it, but um, it just it, the camera is wherever it is. So the position of this object relates to wherever I want the top left of the screen to be, and um, that's kind of what's allowed us to do this particular sort of camera transition. So in the step event for this, I'll just run through basically what this code does. Okay, um, this is all you need as well. Just this code and this object, and you can plunk it in your room, and it should basically work. It says a uh, variable x2 and y2, okay, we're establishing these two temporary variables each frame of the step event. Um, x2 and y2 are the x and y coordinate that um, the camera object is targeting, okay, um, and the reason we have that instead of just like moving like straight to x equals whatever is that we want to move the camera smoothly and so we want to move it in increments rather than just like snapping it to one spot, all right. And then what we do is we say, um, if the player exists in the first place, um, because if it doesn't exist then we don't want to move the camera around and we don't want to do checks based on the player if the player isn't in the room, otherwise the game will crash. So assuming that the player object exists, um, we set x2 to be the position. Right, okay. So what we're basically doing is we're going to find the position of the player, his x coordinate at any given time, and see basically if it's like how many times that player's x position divides into the width of the camera. Okay, so if your camera is 1024 wide and um, your player is at position like 600 or whatever, um, 600 um, doesn't divide into um, 1024, right? It doesn't divide in whole numbers, right? Um, it's like zero point something of uh, 1024. But when the player is at, say, position 1300 in the room, because if you look how the room's built, like it's not a room transition, this, it's just strictly a, a camera trick, right? It's moving from here to here. Once my player's position is around here, let's say like 137, uh, 1376, for example, okay? 1376 divides into 1024 one point something, but in whole numbers, one time, okay? So, uh, let me get my camera back. So that's basically what we're trying to find out here. So we do that by typing object uh, underscore obj underscore player dot x div, so that's div returns the number of times the first value divides into the second value in whole numbers, as I just described. So the number of times obj underscore player dot x divides into view underscore w view and zero because it's the zeroth view. If you're only using one view, you don't actually have to put those square brackets with zero on the end. You can just uh, do that. But it's safer to just do zero and it gives you the freedom to use other views later without getting the code confused. Yeah. So the number of times it divides into that. So when you're in the first area of the screen, that'll be zero. And when you're in the next area of the screen, that'll be one. So now we know what we can do. We can just multiply that number that we've got by the width of our view, by 1024, right? So multiply that by view underscore w view zero. I mean, I could write 1024, but in order for this to work with any camera size, I've just written the, the width of the view. And so that will return zero 
when we're in this space and 1024 when we're in this space and then if we go even further it'll return 2048 and so on and so forth and it'll work infinitely in that direction okay as long as you don't go into negatives okay um, and it'll work infinitely in a positive direction as well by doing the exact same thing with y again assuming you don't go into negatives okay so once we've got those two variables that we know exactly where we want to be what I've done here is I get established another two uh, variables okay diff x and diff y Okay, um, this was mostly just to save myself writing a really, like, I, I'm using this twice, so, like, I didn't want to write x2 minus x and y2 minus y twice in the next few lines. Just a personal preference thing for how I'm reading it, you could just do it the other way. Uh, but I, diff x and diff y are going to equal the difference between where the camera is now, the camera object, that is, um, and where it wants to be. So we take x2, which is the x coordinate we want to have, and we subtract x from it. Okay, and that might be a negative number, but if you ab if you the absolute of that value is, um, and when the, by the absolute I mean if you take the number and assume it's positive no matter what. So if you got minus one seven one, the absolute of that would be one seven one, and the absolute of one seven one would be one seven one. Um, then you've got the exact the difference between those points right in pixels. Okay. And get the same for y, and then we say if abs, so absolute, um, our difference between our x position is less than 1, x equals x2, okay? Basically what this line does is it means that if, like when we're doing the smooth interpolation, when we get so close we stop like getting smoother and smoother and smoother and we just snap, okay? Otherwise, Okay, we just move towards the x position. So we say x plus equals uh, the difference between uh, the x coordinate we have and the x coordinate we want to be. So say like between 700 and 800, all right, that's a difference of 100. Uh, 100 divided by 15. Okay, and we move that amount. So we move like the, d the distance between where we want to be divided by 15 each time, okay? Which means you move fast at the beginning and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller as the distance gets smaller, the, the speed at which you're moving gets smaller, okay? And that's why we do the snap, because otherwise it just gets smaller infinitely, and uh, technically the ne number never actually reaches your destination if you just keep moving by a division of 15, right? Um, but because we've done this uh, abs diff x thing, then we snap there when we get really, really close, okay? Within one pixel, basically. And then we do the same thing with y. And then once we've done that, we've got the x position that the camera wants to be in, and um, the view, all we have to do at the end is just say view underscore x view 0 equals x and view underscore y view 0 equals y. Okay, just changes the x and y position of the view to be whatever coordinate we've worked out for this camera. Alright, simple as that. One one event, like what was it, like no, 20 lines of code or something. And uh, yeah, it creates a cool camera. You'll notice like it's important where you position this at the beginning, like I positioned it in the top left a little bit off to the side like I've got blocks here but actually like like if I delete a few of those you can see like it's like outside the edge of the room I actually put it outside the edge of the room just so when I start the game it does a little slide into place things just as a temporary thing that I thought like kind of looks neat um, you see it slides into place at the beginning there um, but yeah where have you like if I position this at zero zero then and it would start at zero zero kind of thing but if I go ahead and like move this Oh, if I can even select it, there we go. Like all the way over here, for example. All right, if I put it there, we should see like a zoom all the way to here at the beginning, yeah? Okay? And if you want to avoid that and you want to like always have it somewhere, have it in the right place without having to like position the object manually, then all you want to do is you just want to go into like um, obj underscore camera. Uh, where is it? Here. Go into the create event. Um, add a code action and just be like uh, x equals 0, y equals 0, just so that it's positioned at those coordinates at the beginning of the game. So I close that, run this, we should see... Oh, of course, yeah. 0, 0 is in the top left corner, which is higher than I wanted it to be, so it actually needs to be, what, like 7, 6, 8? In order to be in that space at the beginning there, right? Yeah, okay, so then it starts here and we can restart the room in it it's always there okay now um, this basically uses the same system 
that I was demonstrating in my dynamic camera tutorial, and I was planning on doing a couple of extra things for that, like uh, like how you can do a screen shake with it and a few little things. Um, any other tutorials I do that apply to that dynamic camera will basically apply to this one as well, because it's more or less exactly the same code, okay? So yeah, I hope you found that useful in some capacity, and I'll catch you guys next time. See you guys. I'll catch you guys on Monday. I might be a bit late starting on Monday, because I need to go to the doctors. But I'll still see you there, either way. So I'll catch you then, next time guys, in a bit.